I keep trying to tell y'all, serving God is not a game. When you're called, you're serving God 24-7, 365. When you're withdrawn from your relatives, you don't go back. You don't go back. He has pulled you away from the world to serve his purpose. I'm not sure. I think it was uh, Philip or either Thomas who was talking with Peter when they were all in the wilderness resting along with Yeshua, Jesus. And I think it was Philip or Thomas. I'm not for sure. But it was Peter that, that he was talking to. One of them was talking to Peter about how they're not going to go back with their family, their blood relatives. You know, and Peter, he wanted to go back, kept wanting to go back to his peeps. But Thomas or Philip was like, bro, you ain't no going back. We're called. We, we, we're not never going back to our relatives. You got to let it go. That's it. We're ambassadors now. We out here working along with Christ. We got to serve the purpose now. It's on. This is our job. This is our duty. Peter at one time wanted to go back into fish, fishing, and 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 Yeshua was like, "No, you're fishing for me in that." So what I'm saying is, you know, I'm I'm tired. That's why I'm laying down, and I have to get some sleep because in another what three hours I had to get back up to go to my other gig. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the true called out ones can relate. If you're called and you're claiming you're saved, you're claiming you're set apart, you're claiming you're chosen, you're not tired, oh, hallelujah. If you're not tired of serving, not saying you're tired of serving God, but if you're not uh, drained or overwhelmed is what I'm saying. If you're not tired from being exhausted from the, the physical things of the world and also the spiritual things in the world, you're not serving hard enough. Oh, Heavenly Father, give me your spirit, huh? You're not serving if you're not tired. You're not serving God if you're not overwhelmed. Hallelujah. People, if you are living right about now, and what I mean by living is living, you're working, you're serving God, you're, you're, you're trying to eat right, you happy. And people, you have to understand what happiness means. Happy, being happy living in this wicked world is just being happy that God is in your life and you have peace in your surroundings and within yourself. God said, Jesus said, anything you want Ask me and you shall receive it. People, you have to understand when you ask for the right things according to God's will, he is going to grant that. If you pray for peace, he's going to grant that. If you pray for righteousness, he's going to grant that. If you pray for wisdom, he's going to grant that. Huh? If you pray to be rich, he may not grant that. If you pray for a Ferrari, he may not grant that. Because these are things for the wrong purpose as the set apart one. You have to understand the meaning of this. He gives according to his will. The point of me making this video is this. If you are living and working, doing what you need to do to make ends meet, to support yourselves, and you being a beast about what you're doing, I don't mean a, 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 a bad beast. I'm just saying you being, you, you, you doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? You, you on some Samson style, you know, you on some David execution style. That's what I'm saying. You doing your thing. And you got everybody else that's hating on you. If you are experiencing your co-workers, even maybe your managers or your, or your family that see you doing your thing and progressing in life, they're going to be trying to belittle you. 
If you're experiencing your co-workers and coach leaders and supervisors and shift leaders and your relatives, when they come around you or you come around, they always got something negative to say, do not eat that. Let it fly. Let it rub off. That don't apply to you. That's about them. When you're around someone, they always got something negative to say about what you're doing. They are trying to belittle you. They are trying to take your shine away from your spirit. They trying to make you feel the way they feel about you. People, workers, employees, if you at work and you always pulled into a meeting where everybody always having a meeting and this one, maybe two people, especially this one, is always negative, always complaining about certain employees not doing this or not doing that. They are trying to take your shine away from you. They're trying to make your enthusiasm fall away from your gift of working and executing. You are burning their vibe away. You're taking it away. You're taking, you're dimming and you're dimming and you're dimming their lights. Their lights are already dim, but you ever seen them lights where you got to turn it down and turn it down until it's off. That's what you're doing, even though you're not trying to, but your light is so bright. Woo. They're about to get ready and shut off. And so what they're doing, they're trying to artificially keep their light up. They're trying to, they trying to keep it bright. They trying, they trying, but they're doing it in an artificial way. Huh? See, see what they're doing. They are already in darkness. They're dim rather. And they're trying to compete, be in competition with you by trying to Force their light to go up by trying to dim yours. Huh? I hope I'm making sense to somebody. It takes wisdom to listen to these teachings. If you're around someone who always got something negative to say about you. Or about someone else. That is because they are in threat mode. Huh? They are in threat mode. And see what's going to happen is people... If you give them that vibe, if you give them what they are trying to steal from you, they're going to always win. That's why these type of people keep going and on and on and on and on. They're not going to give up until they succeed. But, oh, Heavenly Father, this is where humility come in at. Humility is like humbling. You have to humble yourself. When God gives you that thought and, and, and that spirit in your mind that keep telling you, no, don't say nothing. Just keep humbling yourself. The other people may think that you're scared. You ain't got nothing to say. It's all about them. You bet not say nothing. Oh, how wrong are they? I'm here to teach. When God tell you to be still, that mean also be quiet. That's not the time to say what you got to say. Let them think what they want to think. Oh, buddy. Let them think what they want to think. They think they got the ups on you because you're not saying nothing. You're humbling. You're obeying. And when you keep obeying, God said it's, it's, it's pleasing to him to see us go through mistreatment when we're trying to do good. See, when we're mistreated in the midst of doing good and righteousness in his sight, he's going to reward us. But what's going to happen is... <clears throat> Excuse me, with all the negative vast that's being thrown at you, trying to trying to dim your light and trying to get you to quit. You you confused about where you should go from that point on because everybody always belittling you. This is what's going to happen. Oh, buddy, I had a slight vibe of it recently. That was a touch of what's to come in the future. When you're going through that, what's going to happen if you continue on through the storm? Meaning humbling yourself and keep executing no matter what. When God show up, he's going to make all those people who belittled you, talked about you, shown you all, disrespected you, laughed at you, and tried to send you all, send you into provocation, get you to quit your job, and try to get your fire lying on you, and always got something negative to say, rolling their ass, looking at you, mean mugging, and yada yada this, and gossiping, and all that, because they can't stand your life, they don't like God, they don't like you, and they don't like Jesus, they don't care, it's all about themselves. Them type of people, watch what's finna happen. 
they're going to be forced to see you get your reward. Oh, buddy, they're going to be your footstool. These same folk, that time come when God decided to say, boom, let it up. You're going to get a reward. I'm talking about not just a heavenly reward. I'm talking about an earthly reward. You're going to get a great reward. So awesome where these folk ain't going to have no choice but to respect you. Even if they don't want to, they're going to be forced to see you get this reward. And they're going to have to respect you. They're going to be like, whoa, why are we sitting here in the middle of this? I want to get out of here. And some of them going to quit because the reward you're going to get is going to be way above their expectations. And it's going to be so powerful and so what they least expect, what could even happen for you or to you, they're going to want to quit. They're going, they, they not going to be able to handle that type of reward. I'm trying to tell you, they're going to be your footstool. This is not happening for nothing, but you have to continue to humble yourself and keep doing your thing. Do not slow down. Do not stop. Don't give in to the shenanigan. Don't say nothing. Let them think. Let them say. Let them do what they want to do. Because God said it's commendable to be treated unfair when you're doing his will. Huh? He said it's okay. It's commendable to God when his called out ones are being treated fair amongst the wolves. Huh? So, people, I'm going to give you a little snippet of what I'm tra- uh, talking about. Like I said, I don't brag about nothing. I'm here to teach and, and, and live and show by example. Just like recently when I was given a reward that I have no knowledge of at the time, but they did. Oh, oh, that was for a reason, huh? That was for a reason. But when the reward was presented to me, it was presented to me in front of my enemies. They were forced to acknowledge it. They were forced to sit down and clap when they didn't want to. Oh, you should have saw the vibe in that office. You should have heard and felt the vibe in that office. The manager was like, go get such and such. Go get this person. Go get, tell them, come on in this meeting. Didn't have no idea what the meeting was about. We talked a little bit about this and that and the other. But when he made sure everybody was in there, then that's when he presented me with the associate of the month reward. I was like, huh? Had no knowledge that I was going to get it. But what I'm saying is, everybody who despised me was right there clapping. Even when they didn't want to. Now I'm at this day to let you know that was just a snippet. Heavenly Father, thank you. Hallelujah. And I still portray the same attitude that God has put within my heart. He said work. He said do it. And he said be still. I got you. That's nothing that's can on that's not happening for a reason. It's not happening just to be happening. It's his purpose. Oh, it's his purpose. He is using us. Sometimes we get confused. Sometimes we know what we're doing. Sometimes we know what we're supposed to do. And sometimes it's things and and people in places that we don't know what's going on. But later on, we find out sooner or later. And I want to thank you. Thank you, Father. Jesus told his disciples. You don't know what I'm doing right now, but you will later, huh? So I'm here to let you know, you got to thank them in advance. When your enemies is using you and abusing you and lying and cheating and doing whatever to try to pull you down, you best to believe these same people are going to be the ones who you are going to be using as a footstool. They're going to be forced to acknowledge and praise your reward, your earthly reward. Shalom.